you want to find out what I'm thinking and what we're doing, uh, you need really to go to Judicial Watch's um, uh, uh, Twitter feed and Facebook feed and my Twitter feed is at Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch is at Judicial Watch and, and go to the feed directly because it just won't pop up. You can't say, well, I'm following Fitton, I'm following Judicial Watch, I'll see the stuff. And that's not a guarantee anymore. You really need to go and check to see what we're doing. What Judicial Watch has been doing is we've been trying to get access to the data to see if anything was on, everything is on the up and up. We're also uh, investigating, considering our own legal challenges to defend clean elections in the various states. So uh, that's always a tougher nut to crack because the candidate has unique abilities uh, to, to uh, pursue these issues. But you know we are separate from the Trump campaign. We're separate from the Democratic Party. We're separate from the Republican Party. We're an independent group. We can't, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not doing uh, this on behalf of a candidate or, or President Trump per se. We're doing any, any of our legal work and educational activity is on behalf of the rule of law and American voters who want to be sure the elections are on the up and up. And to that end, we are battling the media. We are battling big tech that is censoring the, uh, the heck out of me and out of Judicial Watch. I'm, I, I was, I'm, Twitter is suppressing my tweets. They're suppressing the president's tweets. I tweeted out a New York Times article, literally a New York Times article. They censored that. They're targeting me specifically. Now the tweets in theory are still available, but you have to kind of do a double click and they're not easy to share. So if you wanna find out what I'm thinking and what we're doing, uh, you need really to go to Judicial Watch's um, uh, uh, Twitter feed and Facebook feed and my Twitter feed is at Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch is at Judicial Watch. And, and go to the feed directly because it just won't pop up. You can't say, well, I'm following Fitton, I'm following Judicial Watch, I'll see the stuff. And that's not a guarantee anymore. You really need to go and check to see what we're doing and what we're saying about the ongoing debates. Because per usual, Judicial Watch is the leader here. We were the leader in warning of the chaos that was to come. We were vindicated, sadly. Uh, you know, I suspected, I thought the president could win. I suspect that the Senate would remain Republican, although it's not clear whether that will be the case. And I suspect that even the Republicans could take over the House. And it turned out I, was, I wasn't too far off there. Uh, and, but uh, we still don't know what the results are. The, res the Senate, there's gonna be in theory, some runoffs in the House, in the Senate, uh, in Georgia specifically, excuse me. And uh, in, uh, and the presidency obviously is still being uh, decided. So what are the options here besides the legal fights we're talking about? Is, is the Supreme Court gonna call a new election, knock out votes that changes the results? You know, to kind of to say it is to kind of make it seem like it's not gonna, it kind of tells you how unlikely it is to happen, doesn't it? I don't rule it out. Uh, but, uh, you know, let me know what you think of my, my, uh, my argument that three, uh, one, th three USC section one uh, should be the basis of analyzing how the election turned out, that you, we should be taking a snapshot of where we were on Tuesday, and that should be the results that the states have to grapple with in assigning electors to, uh, to the electoral college, which is the next big issue. So let's say the states, uh, the, the campaigns can't convince the courts to do something appropriate. Well, what's the option? Well, under our constitution and federal law, the electoral college is the, is, the, um, is the process through which disputes about, in many ways, you know, this is, goes to the reason, another reason the courts may not do it because the electoral college may be involved. That's how they resolve disputes about elections. So uh, the states uh, appoint electors, the state legislature in the end appoints electors and they kind of delegate their power to pick the electors to the voters. I mean, in theory, you could live in a state and the state legislature could say, you know, we're gonna assign the electors. We don't need to have a popular vote, but that's not what they do. But in the end, what's interesting is 
state legislatures still have the final say as to who the electors are, in theory. And so the state legislators in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, and in Georgia, if they so chose, they could look at the election results for that seem to be going for Joe Biden and say, you know what, we don't like, we agree with Fitton. We agree with the concerns that this counting past election day was inappropriate. It's, it's completely undermined confidence in how the election was conducted. Um, it looks like President Trump won and there's no good faith reason to suggest otherwise because the way those additional votes were counted and accumulated uh, can't be justified and defended in terms of fairness and in terms of uh, reassuring people that they were counted fairly and uh, in, a, in a way that reassures that the outcome was uh, uh, was appropriately uh, uncovered. You know, you want to uncover the victor. How do you uncover the victor? In my view, by figuring out who won on election day, not by counting and counting and counting for days afterwards. I mean, deadlines matter. So getting back to what the state legislators can do, they can designate their own slate of electors. They have final say. So in theory, the Republican controlled legislature of Pennsylvania and the Republican controlled legislature of Georgia and Michigan and Wisconsin, they're all controlled by Republicans. They can point state, uh, legis uh, state electors, or excuse me, electors to the electoral college who will support President Trump, his reelection. Uh, but it's more complicated than that because, and I'm not sure about this issue, but it, it could result in dueling slates being appointed out of the states where you have the slate that uh, arose from the vote, and then you have the slate that arose from the uh, legislature's appointment, and that would be what they call dueling slates. And then what happens then? Well, you may recall the Electoral College votes are then affirmed and approved by the House and the Senate. And what happens is they have a joint session of Congress and the House and the Senate meet together. And in the end, uh, you know, they, they, they hear the electoral counts and they're called and all of that, but objections can be raised. And my understanding is you can have a, an objection has to be raised by both a Senator and a House member. And if an objection is raised, and let's say there's an objection, oh, we don't believe the Ohio uh, slate is appropriate because the state legislature, or excuse me, the Pennsylvania slate is appropriate because the state legislature appointed a pro-Trump slate when in fact the votes that we looked at show that uh, Biden won. So that dispute is resolved in a debate separately held by the House and the Senate. So they meet together and they go apart. And then they figure out whether to accept this the slate. Now, the interesting thing is it's easy to figure out what happens if they both agree Either it's accepted or not, but it's not clear what happens if they disagree. So I don't know what happens then. I mean, it's, I guess it's a matter of interpretation, whether, whether there would, it will be the House and the Senate collectively that interpret it, or whether the court has to step in and interpret how it's supposed to run. I mean, there's some suggestions that the governor's certification is considered final and dispositive, but others suggest that's not the case. So it's mightily complicated, mightily complicated. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.